Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. It has been a week for Marvel. There were a bunch of huge announcements this week about the future of Doctor Doom, Avengers 5, Avengers 6, Secret Wars, what they're going to do with Jonathan Majors Kang as the overarching main villain, and they confirm plans to bring back Iron Man and all the original Avengers, even Black Widow. It was a lot. Like, seriously, there were like 10 different big announcements all at the same time. Having a big audience for you must be a cool thing. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm excited. Good for I'm you. Excited. You made it, Chris. We'll see how it goes. You know, fingers crossed. So we'll break it all down. Some of it just confirms what we already knew. Like some of this stuff, I've actually already done videos about in the past couple of months, but there were a few big surprises. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing the Loki Blu-ray giveaways. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post all your theories about how you want them to introduce Doctor Doom in the MCU. Starting with probably the biggest announcement in all this stuff, Doctor Doom himself. Variety, the other major trades, confirmed that Kevin Feige and Marvel are about to completely get rid of Jonathan Major's Kang the Conqueror and the whole concept of the Council of Kings as an overarching villain way faster in favor of pivoting to Doctor Doom. Apparently, they're right on the cusp of making him the main overarching villain in Avengers 6 Secret Wars. If you're not a big comic book fan or you haven't read the more recent comic book Secret Wars, it is nuts. I would recommend checking it out because they will be basing at least some of Avengers 6 on it. But then making Doctor Doom the main villain would be like Marvel doing a more comic book accurate version of that more recent Secret Wars. It would be God Emperor Doom being the main villain on Battleworld. We've already been hearing how they're going to involve the TVA and there's going to be a version of Battleworld during Deadpool 3 and that's meant to set up Secret Wars. So all this seems like it's just heading towards a more comic book accurate version of Secret Wars. Here's the thing though, people are like, what, they're getting rid of Jonathan Majors? Nothing has been confirmed about them getting rid of him yet. Supposedly that's going to be answered by the end of Loki Season 2, like there'll be a clear point at the end of Loki Season 2 that will explain what the future of Jonathan Majors Kang or the Council of Kangs is going to be. And apparently Marvel talked about pivoting to Doctor Doom from Kang, like as a whole concept of the Council of Kangs, right after Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, disappointed at the box office earlier this year. It sounds like they might have panicked a little bit, like the general public who aren't big comic book fans, like all the casuals, the larger families out there, wouldn't be quite as down for like the Council of Kangs versus the Avengers or more Kangs beyond that in Secret Wars as your average comic book reader who's just way more familiar with Kang as a character. So at least initially earlier this year, Marvel pivoting away from Jonathan Majors Kang had nothing to do with his legal troubles. That didn't happen till later in the year. The way that Variety the other trades were reporting it, that Marvel had their big yearly retreat out in Palm Springs, the powers that be, Kevin Feige, all met to discuss what they're going to do with the future of Marvel movies and shows. That's where they talked about bringing back the original Avengers, Iron Man, Black Widow, pivoting to Doctor Doom as the main overarching villain. Then much later after that retreat, like later in the year, Jonathan Major started having his legal troubles. That sort of compounded Marvel's desire to generally just move past Kang as a character, like it was starting to become more trouble than it was worth to them when they had so many other major A-list characters in their toy chest on tap that they could just roll out as like another big Avengers level villain. This also kind of confirms why you haven't seen more Doctor Doom Easter eggs in the MCU movies or the TV shows up to this point. Why they didn't reference him back during Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. They were going to start seeding the idea that he was looking for vibranium and then use the adamantium storyline in Captain America 4. Or just like seed him in the background so that he became a much bigger villain. And they introduced more of his technology side and his magical side during the Doctor Strange side of things. Doctor Doom is one of those really interesting characters in that he's really big, people really familiar with him, but he's a man of science and a man of technology, so he works well in technology-based stories like Iron Man type of movies, but he also works really well in magic-based movies like the really darker supernatural stuff. So you can use him in pretty much any kind of movie and he'll work really well. I did a couple videos about this when they were getting ready to release Black Panther Wakanda Forever, but Lake Bell's character, for instance, at the beginning of that movie was supposed to be Lucia Von Barda from Latveria inside the MCU. They were also supposed to reference Latveria during Moon Knight, for example, like the castle that we see is meant to be a representation of a castle in the Doctor Doom comics. So you can kind of see that at a certain point they were starting to see the character and then they decided to maybe pivot to the character like, oh, maybe we actually make him the next Avengers villain. So they changed a bunch of their plans. As far as I know, they didn't get as far along as actually casting an actor to play the character. There have been a lot of rumors about who might wind up playing him. And Marvel, as far as I know, hasn't revealed yet whether they're actually going to swap a Kang version of the Beyonder in Secret Wars for God Emperor Doom. Like, will they actually make him the next overarching villain? 
all that Variety, the trades were reporting is that Marvel had like really serious discussions about like, okay, if we're going to pivot away from Jonathan Majors, this is probably who the next villain is going to be. We do know that Doctor Doom isn't going to be a major character in the new Fantastic Four movie that they're going to release in a couple of years. Galactus is supposed to be the main villain of that. And at least before all the God Emperor Doom Secret Wars talk, Marvel was planning on introducing the character in a totally different non-Fantastic Four movie. But if you think about it, if Marvel wants him to be an impactful main villain in Secret Wars, like in a big Avengers movie, they have to develop the character significantly before they just roll him out. Like, they can't just show up in Secret Wars and be like, ha ha, I'm behind everything. Really good example of that is Loki in the first Avengers movie. Like, he was the main villain in the first Avengers movie. But before that, they introduced him in the first Thor movie, and he was a main character. They developed the character pretty well during that. So that by the time you get to the first Avengers movie, you know who he is when he shows up. I'm burdened with glorious purpose. They basically have to do kind of the same thing for Doctor Doom. And since Kevin Feige and Marvel have control of like 99% of their characters now, my current idea for how they introduce the Doctor Doom character is they introduce him at the end of the Iron Man Armor Wars movie and just say that he was the one that was really trying to get his hands on all the Stark tech in all the adamantium that they're going to introduce in Captain America 4, just say he was behind it. Like, he's not a main character in those movies. He just shows up in, like, the post credit scenes or just some teasers. Just saying that he wants all that technology, all that new adamantium to enhance his own armor, his own weapons, maybe other few cameo scenes in other Marvel movies during Marvel Phase 6. Then they use him as one of the major characters in Doctor Strange 3 as a way to show off his magical power and because Doctor Strange 3 is so focused on all the incursion storyline, that was a major part of the lead up to comic book Secret Wars in the Time Runs Out storyline. If you didn't read that original version of Secret Wars, Doctor Doom was revealed to be a major player during that storyline, so using him in Doctor Strange 3 would just be another more comic book accurate version of this storyline. Then you have Doctor Doom fighting with the heroes during Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty against the Council of Kangs. Then at the end of that movie, he winds up being the one to kill the remaining Council of Kangs and tries to seize control of all reality himself. And it's another comic book moment, just swapping the Beyonders for the Council of Kangs. During the lead up to comic book Secret Wars, he stole the power of the Beyonders to become God Emperor Doom and save what was left of all reality as the remaining universes started collapsing. We're kind of seeing that play out in the MCU right now with the incursions. The Marvel's movie is coming out next week as I'm posting this video. We're going to see an incursion going down during that movie. Doctor Doom combined the fragments of all the surviving universes into a single battle world where a bunch of the multiverse characters who survived from these other universes all lived. But when he did that, he also changed the timeline, we're talking about Loki Easter eggs here, changed reality to what he wanted it to be. So in this new version of reality that he created on Battleworld, he was with Sue Storm, who loved him, and he'd always been in love with this whole time. Everyone served him, worshipped him as God Emperor Doom. Eventually, the survivors figured out what really happened, banded together and stopped him, then restored the multiverse. So it does sound like Marvel might wind up doing a more comic book accurate version of Secret Wars. What they do wind up doing will be a little bit different, though. Like, we still know that Tobey Maguire and Hugh Jackman will be, like, the main leads of that movie, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and there'll be a multiverse version of the Avengers team that Doctor Strange puts together. Kevin Feige is still going to use the movie as a sort of swan song for all the legacy Fox Marvel actors, like give them their own version of Avengers Endgame. But it just sounds like they might wind up swapping Doctor Doom for Kang. I think a lot of people would actually prefer that too. A lot of people when they announced Secret Wars were like, yay, do God Emperor Doom, it'd be amazing. It would be the simplest thing in the world to just have him show up at the end of Avengers 5 and just swipe the rest of the Council of Kangs and try to take control of all reality himself. You just have to develop the character enough before Avengers 5. Here's where we get to the other Avengers coming back. So the next big announcement that they made this week was they confirmed that Marvel was going to bring back all the original Avengers, including Iron Man and Black Widow, who died during Avengers Endgame. We always knew that they were going to come back, though. I think the only difference is they just confirmed it. And we know now what's changed is they'll probably ask for way more money. Think about how much Robert Downey Jr. is going to get paid for this. Supposedly, Loki Season 2 is going to end on a moment that will explain a little bit more about Marvel's path forward towards Avengers 5. Now, a lot of you are asking, how does this affect Marvel's reboot that they're supposed to be using Secret Wars for? Like, they're going to use Secret Wars to do a soft reboot of the Marvel Universe and make it look more like the true comic book 616 universe going forward. Generally, I don't think this changes anything about that. Like, Kevin Feige is always going to retune things behind the scenes with Secret Wars. Generally, it does seem like Kevin Feige is starting to get a handle on writing the course, like writing the ship at Marvel, like things are heading in a much better direction. 
So even though it does seem like things are really crazy over there right now, I think like in the next couple years, they'll get things worked out for the most part. There's just a backlog of stuff that they've already made during their more chaotic, like during the pandemic period that they still have to release. So it'll probably be a little while before we actually get to like the brand new projects that they've completely reworked from the ground up. Really good example of that is Daredevil Born Again. Like they completely canceled the previous version of the show. They hired on the showrunner from The Punisher, a bunch of the Loki people, a bunch of the Moon Knight people to make a much better version of the show. And it sounds like Kevin Feige is just doing that for like all the upcoming Marvel movies and TV shows. Like he's just making better versions of all that stuff. There are a couple of really big things that are coming up that do seem that they're going to be bangers though. Like X-Men 97 is coming up early next year. There are a couple other big projects that I'll talk about when we get some trailers. We're also supposed to get an Echo trailer probably Friday morning, maybe next week. Whenever they release it, of course, I'll do a video for it. It's going to be a big Daredevil and Kingpin reunion in the MCU. I know there's a billion other questions that everybody has about all the upcoming stuff. Like all these Marvel announcements just raise more questions than they answer. So whatever they wind up announcing in the next couple of weeks, of course, I'll do videos for that. My full Loki Season 2 Episode 5 video will post next. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. My Invincible Season 2 Episode 1 video will post after that too. There's also a Boys Gen V finale coming out this week too. I will try to post all that stuff as quickly as possible. Click here for that Loki Season 2 Episode 5 video and click here to learn about that big Marvel reboot that's happening. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.